I first learned about Matthias de Stefano last year when I was making my videos covering the pseudo-scientific streaming platform known as Gaia. He's a recurring character on their platform where conspiracy theories and demonstrably false claims about science and history thrive. And even then I realized that the claims of Matthias de Stefano would require their own video to properly examine and refute them, especially because Matthias's influence spreads far beyond his appearances on Gaia. He's essentially managed to make a whole career out of lying through his teeth. In short, Matthias claims to have memories of many of his past lives, during one of which he lived in an ancient civilization far more advanced than anything we can even imagine. The Lost Kingdom of Atlantis. According to my memory, uh, Atlantis uh, people started to exist like 20,000 years ago, humans started to design uh, with other beings from other places the, the structure of the civilization that they got and they understood the world, they understood that we were part of the world. So they started to follow the technology of the planet. So they understood that information was, um, was moved through the plants but was recorded on stone. So they were following the plants and taking the stones and through sound, basically building the information. Over the years, Matthias de Stefano has gained a significant amount of attention based on his claims about Atlantis. According to his narrative, he possesses remarkable memories and spiritual experiences that connect him to the lost kingdom of Atlantis. He describes himself as an indigo child, a term used to describe individuals with special abilities and a heightened spiritual awareness. De Stefano asserts that he has vivid recollections of his past lives, and extremely detailed memories about Atlantis. He claims that Atlantis was a highly sophisticated civilization with sophisticated technologies, advanced healing practices, and a deep understanding of spirituality. According to him, Atlantis played a significant role in shaping human history and had a global impact. In his alleged memories, De Stefano describes the architecture, the culture, and the intricate systems of Atlantis. He claims to have insights into the ancient society's governance, education, and spiritual traditions. According to his account, he has a special mission to share this knowledge and help humanity rediscover its true potential. There were a lot of people that thought that I know many things, but I never consider myself knowing things, I just remember things. And sometimes I was feeling like people believe that I am wise because of what I'm, I'm explaining, but I'm not wise, I, I'm just repeating like a parrot what my spirit says. To provide a comprehensive analysis of Matthias de Stefano's claims about Atlantis, it's essential to dive into the historical context surrounding the myth and its origins in Plato's dialogues. Plato, an influential ancient Greek philosopher, introduced the concept of Atlantis in two of his dialogues, Timaeus and Critias. God, I definitely pronounced that wrong. These dialogues explore a range of philosophical ideas and engage in philosophical discourse. Plato's dialogues weren't meant to be historical accounts, but rather philosophical works that employed allegory and storytelling to convey deeper concepts and moral lessons. In Plato's dialogues, Atlantis was an advanced, prosperous civilization that was riddled with moral corruption. In the story, the gods sank the kingdom into the ocean as punishment. Atlantis serves as a metaphorical representation of an ideal society and its subsequent downfall due to arrogance and hubris. The tale offers a philosophical exploration of concepts like governance, human nature, and the pursuit of knowledge. Plato used Atlantis as a tool to convey 
philosophical ideas and provoke thought, not as a literal description of an ancient civilization. By understanding the philosophical intentions of Plato's dialogues and recognizing the allegorical nature of the Atlantis myth, we can justifiably approach Matthias de Stefano's claims about Atlantis with a critical lens. But just like investigating any claim, it's crucial we examine the available evidence and question its credibility. Despite extensive archaeological expeditions all across the world, there's been no definitive discovery of Atlantis as an ancient civilization. The lack of tangible evidence, like structures or artifacts from this ancient civilization, raises valid skepticism about its existence. Apart from Plato's dialogues, there is a notable absence of credible documentation on the Kingdom of Atlantis. And despite their philosophical and allegorical nature, Plato's writings remain the main source of this myth. Scientific consensus, which emerges from rigorous research, peer review, and analysis, is crucial to establishing the credibility of extraordinary claims. And in the case of Atlantis, there is no widespread scientific consensus supporting its existence. But the strongest myths have an element of truth to them. That's one reason why many historians believe that it is possible that real civilizations may have influenced or contributed to the Atlantis myth. The best example of this would be the Minoan civilization on the island of Crete, which experienced a catastrophic volcanic eruption. But even if these real historical events provide a good explanation for how these myths came about, they don't provide an explanation for the claims made by Matthias de Stefano. Protikta was the structure of 33 cubes that creates this interdimensional and three-dimensional chacana, which is this shape of the symbol that we had in South America, in Bolivia and Peru. But when you split it in different structures, in different cubes, you would have the, the system that they used to create the pyramids to create the technology of vibration. They used to put water inside and encode this water by vibration. So everything that was exactly the same would reproduce the same amount of energy and vibration by quantics along the whole planet. So every pyramid, every temple, every stone circle that has the shape of this structure would replicate the same amount of energy and vibration so everyone could reach the information that they were searching. It was like the first Wi-Fi, the first internet that we had in, in, the, in our planet. By positioning himself as an alleged eyewitness to the ancient civilization of Atlantis, Matthias can claim to be the most reliable of all sources. And while in most cases, anyone making such extraordinary claims would be immediately exposed and shut down by contradictory evidence, the true power of platforms like Gaia rears its ugly head once again. Gaia cultivates a bubble in which extraordinary claims have an extremely low barrier for consideration. Think about it, the reason we call claims like the lost kingdom of Atlantis extraordinary in the first place is because its very existence would shatter our relatively consistent understanding of science and history. But if you spend every day watching UFO conspiracy theories and pseudoscientific documentaries on Gaia, you could be left believing a wide tapestry of all sorts of wacky ideas all at once. With that, any new conspiracy or fiction like the ramblings of Matthias de Stefano don't seem like extraordinary claims anymore. They become ordinary, ordinary claims. In other words, the vast majority of Gaia's viewer base presumes the story of Atlantis to be true long before Matthias makes up evidence to support it. Which, of course, suggests that there's really no point to me making this video. Gaia's viewer base isn't interested in evidence or probability. They're not interested in the truth. I've said this before. In their eyes, their ideas are far more advanced 
than any observations made through scientific or rational analysis. So when it comes to changing people's minds, videos like this one are about as effective as trying to put out a burning building with the concept of morality. But I am optimistic, because you and I, we know that the most reasonable explanation for Matthias's claims is that he's lying. <laughs> Even though Gaia is worth upwards of 50 million dollars, and any video including Matthias de Stefano gets thousands, hundreds of thousands of views, you and I, we know he's just a grifter perpetuating some story that he started telling when he was a kid, and he just never stopped because at some point he managed to make a career out of it. He's not an indigo child. He's a con man. All right, so bring us into bring us into the time of Kem and the language of Atlantis with a little song, if you would.